So I want to introduce this episode um, to you to say that it includes my father, uh, Paul Mitchell, uh, not the guy who did hair products, different Paul Mitchell. Um, he is a long-time martial artist of 40-something years, I don't know, can't remember, it's a long time anyway, it's numerous decades. Um, he's a Tai Chi and Karate instructor, um, obviously he was my first teacher whilst I was growing up, um, and then, you know, we've trained alongside each other. Mostly our father-son relationship has been based upon training martial arts alongside each other, really. That, that's what we've done all of these years. He's not someone that's hugely in the public eye. Um, he tends to keep to himself uh, a little bit, although he, he, he teaches and, and has a number of, uh, a lot of students in the UK. So it was, you know, I was quite happy that he was uh, agreeing to join me in this podcast and, and chat with me. I'm glad he did because I think it's a shame, actually, that um, out of all of the teachers I had across different parts of China and Southeast Asia, as well as Europe and, and things like that, he was definitely, um, you know, my father was definitely one of the greatest influences upon my training. And even though perhaps I moved away stylistically from some of the things I learned from him when I was younger with the Shotokan um, and things like this, I still maintain the Tai Chi that, that, that I did alongside him. But... Um, I, I maintain many of the qualities, uh, the idea of being true to yourself and having a strong moral and ethical code, um, the idea of self-discipline and any kind of sense of strength I have and to have a kind of workhorse attitude for these practices, they all came from him, you know, they all came from my, my father. So, I, you know, I owe a great deal uh, to him, not just with my life, but also with regards to training in general. So I'm happy to introduce you to him on this podcast. I did the usual thing, of course, as well as, you know, you know we have sound quality issues, don't we? And, and I knew that, um, you know, that, that people are, would rather we had better sound quality. But unfortunately, I recorded this talk in the UK whilst I was there in his personal training and shrine room. So consequently, it's echoey and the sound quality is a little bad because of the room we're in. Primarily, it wasn't a great recording space, very echoey. Also, the lighting's not great, it's a bit dingy. But I thought it was better to do that because not being someone that's hugely um, extroverted, I guess like I am in a way, um, my father was more comfortable to talk in his own training space. So I'm happy that we got to record it um, and have a chat uh, between us. There's about an hour and 20 footage of us talking um, and then some footage was actually cut from the end, and I'll explain why um, for those of you who get to the end of the talk. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my father in this episode. This separation between student and teacher is only really necessary, I think, uh, if, if the teacher's insecure. If the person's insecure, you're, you're quite happy to resent yourself as you truly are. I was going that to a group yesterday oh, yeah. when I was teaching Glastonbury, yeah, because we were talking, well, they're all teachers, aren't they? The people I was talking to. And I was saying to them, when I started teaching, I had, uh, especially when I started teaching Qigong, I had a bunch of people around me that were quite, uh, very well-meaning, were trying to be helpful, but they were always telling me, you need to set up boundaries between you yeah, and yeah, your yeah. students. Yeah, and I was yeah. saying to them, but that never worked for me. No. Because oh. I realized that any boundary you set up, by the very nature of what you're doing, is you're gonna place them below you. Yeah. You never place them above you with a set of boundaries. So you're, you're instantly pedestaling about yourself and that never worked for me. So after making numerous mistakes with that over years and coming across as very fake on some level, like yeah, was, yeah. I, I just yeah. had to give in and eventually just became friends with everybody. It's, defi it's definitely a balance though. It's definitely yeah. a balance. You know, I mean, truthfully, would you want your students to see on your worst day? And we all have our worst <laughs> days or our worst moments. No, of course not. Of course you're not. So, you know, if you're doing anything, you've got to, you've got to have a professional side to what you're doing. Sure. You just have to. You have to. But, but so, yeah, I mean, your students should be able to see how you live your life, how you treat your people in your life, how you treat your pets. You know, how you, yeah, they should definitely be able to see this, you know, because... That's an interesting concept that they should, that's really good. I never, never heard that said before, that a student should be able, should have access to, at least after a while, to see how you treat the other people in your life. I think that's really major because there's been a couple of teachers in China, for example, I walked away from after I saw how they communicated with their kids and their wife and yeah. serving staff in restaurants. I think it was uh, Muhammad Ali that said, yeah. I watch a person 
and see how they they treat a waiter. Yeah. The waiters, and if they treat talk to them badly, I know darn well. If they was a guy wasn't me, that's how they'd talk to me. And absolutely, that is, that, you know, I. Well, you know, obviously, you know me all my life, as I've known you all your life, and you know that one thing that's true: all men are born equal in my mind. You know, and people through my life was yeah, but they're not born equal. Now, I'm talking about everybody has equal rights. Yep. Within existence, I don't mean within human society, but we all know we go. I should imagine, you know, anybody that's viewing this has a pretty good perspective on how screwed human society is. You know, and then yep. within human society, you know, not everybody's born equal, but within existence, all people are born equal. So that has always that has always played very heavily um, on my mind when te- well, always when I'm dealing with people. You know. Yeah, because the inequality you're talking about that exists in society is what starting positions, like things they're born with, positions they're born with. Mostly starting positions, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, those things should be ignored in martial arts really. It should be once people walk in the room there it's the great equalizer when they come into that space for what they have access to, right? Absolutely. I've got a (coughs) a, one girl, God bless her, that's that's trained with me for uh, twelve years. Mm-hmm. She has probably the worst, or not the worst, but the most difficult for her autism to deal with I've ever come across in a person. Yes. But she's still there 12 years later, and she's now standing in the, with the brown belts in my martial arts section. I don't yeah. know whether she'll ever get up to the next stage, I don't know, you know. But actually, I watch her, and because... And she's been with just about every lesson also in that, that 12 years, and and... and yeah, she has the same rights as everybody else. You know, her hand should be here, and it's probably up here still. You know, like yeah. after all this time. But the amount of effort she puts in just to be there um, is phenomenal. Yeah, you know, all men are born equal. Simple in my book. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's that it's that challenge, that balance between. Uh, helping somebody to develop skill or ability or attainment in these practice but also at the same time recognizing that that attainment is individual depending upon where they started from right yeah so it, people and, can travel the same distance and that attainment as well as being useful as, as a means of their future development yes. should also be useful in their everyday life as well okay yeah yeah very much so you know I've always, I always think this we should always I mean, build an internal energy Okay, that's really fantastic for internal arts, but to have loads of internal energy is good for every aspect of your life. If you want to go for a run, if you, you know, if your you know, if your body starts to get, you know, if you're starting to get older, which is another thing. I don't think anybody gets old. We just die young, <laughs> you know. But okay. yeah, I, I just think yeah. I mean, the, the, that the application of internal energy is actually having more energy. Yeah, which you know, it's. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs it. Not many people would say they have too much. But then at the same time, I've had people that I, I taught and they gone to and they develop more energy and then they complain they've got more energy. I've had people moan saying, well, now I don't know what to do with it. So oh, they say they're, they're hyper. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but they're not hyper from like manicness or stress or anxiety, but they don't understand that because that's the only time they've ever experienced having more energy or feeling like they've had more energy yeah. is when they're manic. So I had to say to them, well, yeah, you've got more energy, you've got more stuff to do now. So now that, that time you spend sat on the couch watching TV, go do something with yeah, that energy. Yeah. And once they do that, then they're fine again. It's just, you have more fuel. Yeah, yeah. Side, I mean, it's, it's a different problem. It's a far better problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fact it's a problem is great. Yeah. You know, this, yeah. you know, the UK at the moment, you know, it's certainly in January, you know, the well, UK, it's okay. When the spring comes, summer comes, you know, it's... it's, it's yeah, so it can be a beautiful place, but this time yes. of year, you know, everybody's like, whoa, like this. You know? Yes. They need more energy, man. They do need more energy. <laughs> Trouble is, in Western culture, we have the words, don't we? I haven't got the energy today. Well, I've got loads of energy. And we don't think of it as literal. But it's literal. It's like saying, I haven't got any water or I haven't got any food. You know, it's like, it's no different. You yes. Know? I mean, yeah, for sure. And people have trouble with that tangibility. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, laws of Western laws of physics kind of blow it, as far as I'm concerned. Directly you say something's a law, everybody to nobody challenges it. Like I'm, I'm curious about. Um, obviously, you've been in martial arts for decades, 
you know, longer than me on account that you've been on the planet longer than me and you've trained at these arts longer. And, and even when I was training back in the, you know, when I was a kid and I started in the 80s, obviously I was too young to even remember, I don't really remember them and it was how much use is it as a tiny toddler, but you were an adult at that stage by the time you're training. So I, I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you about this concept that comes up all the time about how things were better in the old days. And it's, it's a phrase that I think especially, I'll be honest, that it's almost like a passive aggressive put down that I used to have off of older martial artists as I was coming up through the martial arts scene. And now I've hit my forties, it's sort of a bit less these days, but and I, and I have mixed feelings on it myself. I think it's true and not true. Yeah, yeah well, I, I obviously, as, as you say, I've experienced and yeah. when I, when I yeah. began uh, training um, martial arts when I was 25, I'd always, okay. you know, I'd long had a, a deep interest in self-defence. <laughs> Came from a very wild place, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, and sort of very much rose up against it. Chose not to sort of creep inside, although I wanted to. I was really yes. quite a sensitive child, but you know, decided. Also, I had an older brother, two years older than me, and he was very sensitive, but he. You know, he could muster a lot of strength when he wanted to. Yeah. And he persuaded me that we should not succumb to life, you know. Okay. So uh, I began with a quite a ha unhealthy interest in violence uh, and defending myself. And then I discovered, of course, once I started doing that, my life turned around. I suddenly had lots of friends. I suddenly lots had lots of interest from girls, which... You know, as a nervous guy, it had always been quite awkward for me. So I thought, actually, this is a good lifestyle. This is pre-martial arts. This was pre-martial yeah. arts. So, okay. um, and so I, I, you know, I did. I formed a kind of very rough lifestyle for myself, called myself all kinds of trouble. Um, I was living sort of halfway between London and Brighton at that time, and right in the middle of the skinhead era. <laughs> and I didn't like that kind, that culture at all. So... We kind of took the fight to them, we decided to. Um, so I had a real interest in, in martiality and I just had one friend, I had two friends actually, it's true, both that trained in, in karate and they nagged me for a long time because they felt that my mindset would fit it, so that's what I did. Was that Paul I, Bradley? I, I simply went to a local beginner's course in karate. Was that Paul Bradley one of those people? Well, Paul Bradley was one of the people. He, he was an thing? interesting, a strange character, funny character. I remember I mean, him. I yeah. got did to him the other day, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, strange. I hadn't seen him in 15, 20 years, maybe, something like sure. this. But, yeah, nice to see him, though. But, yeah, he was one. The other one was Winston, of course, sure. who, was, who I went along with to... Uh, to train my long-standing friend Winston. So what year, what year was that with you went to your... Well, I'm 66 now, so that was 41 okay. years ago. And I can't be bothered to do that. <laughs> okay, so 40, yeah. 41 years ago. Yeah, okay, sure. yeah. yeah. so, um, yeah, yes. so, so one of the things, I tell you, the first night I went, the yeah. the instructor in the, in the class, who, who did turn out to be a very good example of a martial artist in mine or many others opinion come to that you know is but he was a or, or is a person or their skill level uh, both both all right uh, okay. i mean yep. fighting skill level yeah anybody that knows martial arts know that that is part of the criteria so sure. you know yeah. but but on the first night he intentionally uh, did a spinning kick and kicked me in the throat in, in, to sit me <laughs> on my backside yeah. I suspected at the time, and I probably also so to you know to show me his power, you know, yeah. so that I wanted to stay as his student, and I kind of ended up not kicking me in the throat. So I subsequently broke his nose. Okay. <laughs> so that was my first yeah. night in the dojo, um, and it wasn't a you know it wasn't a city club; it was a rural club. But that's kind yeah. of what karate was like. So going back to what you were saying, which is where I was working to, was. Um, you know, it, are things better? Were things better in my day than they were than they are now? I would say no. No, no they were just rougher. You yeah. know, like, it, like Westerners had misinterpreted the whole thing, and they just they they saw certainly in Japanese arts they saw the Japanese mm, inscrutability, coldness, almost 
yeah. as, as, as machoism. Okay. And so that's, they put Western machoism in it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, I think truthfully, technically, things are far better now. And, and also because we're not in wartime, we are in peacetime and, with, and all said and done martial <laughs> arts as opposed to yeah. martial sport. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's coming though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, martial arts as opposed to martial sports are, are certainly uh, the ones I study is as a civilian self-defense, you know, do you, yes. you know um, of course they have a, a degree of aggression because, you know, as is commonly stated, attack is often the best form of defense you know yeah. but but still they have so much more to offer in terms of mind health energy movement creativity than simply the ability to defend yourself to defend yourself is the is the criteria that you use in order to develop yourself you know yeah so, i've yeah. often found that the, the the people that have that view I find, in my opinion is, yeah, that people, I think the training was tougher. There's a resilience and a toughness in people I see from people yes. who trained in that era, but I think that's almost reflective culturally a little bit as well. People are softening a, a tiny bit, but I don't think that's a terrible thing. But I, no, I think I. technically I, I agree with you. I think things have moved on and certainly there's a lot more open sharing of information simply because of the internet on a practical level. <laughs> yeah, not, absolutely. You, you, that's not even to do with I development of people. My, my first teacher had to yeah. travel from the south southwest to um, to far the far north to learn yeah. his third kata, which is like yellow belt, or which is like a green belt kata. Green belt. He hadn't sang that, yeah. and, and and then when he got there, they didn't teach it, so he had to peep in and watch another class doing it. Whereas now you could just <laughs> go and you press a button, and you've got such classic examples. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. I mean, as a teacher of it, I've constantly talked to people about this. I mean, I tell my students, so when I talk about it, I don't talk about, in my day it was harder. I'd say, in my day it was harder to get information, whereas it's much easier now, so I tell them where to find the information. Sure. And then they, they come in, I walk into the class, and there they are with the book. They go, look at this, you know. And, and you know, they tell me what they've seen online, who they've been talking, you know, who's yes. impressed them and stuff. So. I think as a teacher in this day and age, you have to encourage people to do that. Yeah, you know, rather than lock them into just just what you're not, doing. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, the, 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 these days have much more potential. We have we have incredible potential for all arts now, don't we? Yeah, I think so. I I'm sometimes amazed. Well, as you know, having gone and spent a lot of time looking for these things in. Asia in fairly difficult places to find them. I'm sometimes amazed that the things I spent a long time looking for actually they popped up online now. It's quite it's quite a surprise. It's like hang on. Yeah, but that's a lot of that is because you've written about something. You know, well, I mean, yeah, you some know, of it's for me, but there's other people too. I mean, wait, yeah. you didn't see the term they gone much, did you? I mean, it was there, bit, but it wasn't. You didn't bit. see it much, did you? you no, know? a tiny bit. I think it was used um, by Bruce Francis in a different context. Yeah, a different context, and so uh, and sometimes you see. Martial arts, Nei Gong talked about in a different context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, not so much other than that. But no, it's, it's definitely no. exploded. So yeah, I mean, yeah. when you bring when you bring something into a, a particular art or skill, and you put new information, obviously that information yeah. disseminates through it, and that's you can't. You know, it's, this <laughs> idea of copyrighted things has always seemed crazy to me. You know, because. If you're contributing in, into something, mm. you're contributing to the wholeness, or you're trying to. I, I'm mean, pro it. I'm totally pro it. Uh, it's sometimes yeah. people in Lobo Siong and the students come and they're annoyed that they see someone using that terminology that clearly came from your immediate, but it doesn't matter. I think it's good. I think if, if the community as a whole rises up skill wise, yeah, then I think that's good for Because we've just made right. reference to this because we've talked about the internet. Totally. Yeah. And so, you yeah. know, we've said it's a good idea if yeah. people learn. So, if people yeah. therefore learn something that you're teaching, I mean, there's a lot of stuff over the years in mm. martial arts, certainly, that I've learned over the internet and in books. And you go, sure. you know, like, just watch somebody do something. Oh, that's a damn good idea. Yeah, I hadn't thought mm -hmm. of that. Well, that that is the seed for your own. 
creation, your own development sure. of your art. So yeah, of course, people are going to do this. And but I would guess arguably you could do that because you already had a basis in the art, though. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. to yeah. do that too, sir. And I was, I was explaining this to one of my really good students, really nice fellow, but new student, and mm -hmm. you know, I was explaining this to the other day that the, the trouble is if you if you follow every piece of advice because you could have some really good experts on the same subject and they will just slightly disagree. So yes. discernment, you've yeah. got to decide in your, through your own experience which one is closer to the truth. You and, know? and sometimes that disagreement comes just on a technique as well, just because of different body types and yeah, personalities yeah, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen that so many times where I think both people are correct, but they're correct for their body type and where they are in the art and what they're doing. And yes. I see so many quarrels between people who are both correct subjectively. <sighs> It's all perspective, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally. It's all perspective. And Robert, you know, when I started in the martial arts, there was definitely a time when I thought martial arts was about combat efficiency. <laughs> you had to be able yes. to do that. You had to be able to knock a man out in an instant or you as a martial artist. You would... And I wasn't wrong. I just didn't have very good perspective. Just at that time, that's what I was trying to do. Sure. You know, I was trying to develop because I'm going to knock people out. You know, the, 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 you know, I've, I've, from day one, I've always had my my eye on the stars. Me, you know, I, I, I just I can't be, you know, it, I can't just simply be embroiled in the mechanics of movement. It's always got to be philosophy. What's behind that? And that's always interested me. You know, first time I went into a dojo and people were talking about um, Jodan, Chudan, yeah. Gidan. So in other words, sort of head height, body height, groin height. Yeah. And then they pointed out that when you perform techniques at those height, they were the height of your own body. My, my mind went, we are our own worst enemy and we're trying to deal with ourselves. And that has stayed with me for that time. And I mean, I haven't been there more than 10 minutes and that's sure. where my brain went. So, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I, I still believe I was correct in that, in that belief. But I, I sort of sussed that in the first 10 minutes, which kind of means to me my mind was drawn to that aspect rather than actually the physical conflict. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Aspect. And we can't, we can't ignore the, the fact that developmental stages are a major part of martial arts. So mm. one of the greatest traps is to believe that just because you think something is, this is the core of martial arts, or this is the key principle or ethos right yeah. now, it's not going to be the same in five years, or it shouldn't be. <sighs> And, and, and the, obviously company. the problem with that, of yeah. course, is that, that people reach um, physical efficiency in their early 30s. Yeah, sure. And therefore uh, think of themselves often, not everybody's as daft as a brush, but many are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. think themselves at the pinnacle of their art. Sure. Yeah. Just because they are at the physical, well, they're a breeding age, you know, they're kind of <laughs> that that age stage of yeah. their life, you know. Whereas, they, you know, that is, and they people will watch them and they go, that's the pinnacle of martial arts. They watch him 20 years later, yeah. that same person, and they go, well, he's not bad for an old boy. Yes. Yeah, but they're not seeing what's going on inside. <laughs> no, completely, yeah. You know, they're not seeing, because like all this stuff about external and internal, absolutely. When first yeah. you start moving your body is external, because you think where to put your feet, you thought that foot's yeah. there, that foot's there, that foot's there. So I want to move forward, I'll move my feet. Well, your feet can't move themselves, they're not on wheels, are they? <laughs> you know, they don't run through. You have to keep your mind inside your body. Mm -hmm. in order to mechanically move your body. So if somebody stays in an art long enough, and I don't, wouldn't say it always happens, but it should happen in my opinion, their mind goes off their feet and it goes into the centre of their body so they listen to how the body manipulates their feet from the inside. So naturally the body moves in. Well, the more decades you do something, a, a, a physical movement art like karate or kung fu or tai chi obviously this is this is further down the line yeah but you know the the, the closer you should come to to that ideal sure, the inside yeah. moves the outside yeah and then in this way an external art does evolve start to evolve mm -hmm. to an internal art yes you know mm. so so the, there's there's a debate there as well certainly i 
I would agree completely with that definition of uh, the internal art space. Is, yeah, it's about the conditions changing on the inside to change the outside, yep. essentially. Yep. Whereas the outside, external martial arts, my definition would be essentially using leverage and muscles and bones and pivots. Yeah. It's like standard body mechanics, you know, is it, if you're walking around or, or whatever. So then the question becomes, where does the difference lie within the internal and external arts? Because they both they both do have to start fairly externally, to be honest. Well, this is why I said that. I, and then I said Tai Chi slightly yeah. slightly on because then yes. the difference really is internal energy. In my yeah. it's kind of because then we start to which is so tricky in Tai Chi, isn't it? Because you especially if you've got a Nagon practice, because you don't want to suddenly you get all your, your spontaneous movement into yes. your Tai Chi. And so you almost like in, try to ignore your internal energy whilst building your internal energy. It's like, yeah. it's very tricky, isn't it? Maybe I better, I better um, uh, define that just for people who are watching and not familiar with what you're talking about. What, what, okay. what my dad's talking about is the difference between uh, two systems of practice and a particular branch of Nagon that when the chi moves, it can produce, uh, I guess it kind of, it can produce erratic movements in the body slightly that yeah. are semi-automatic or out of your control from inside the system. But you are, I think, distinguishing the difference between Tai Chi internal energy and Neigong internal energy as two separate things there, right? Uh, but the, the awkwardness is yeah. uh, that you need, you almost need the, you know, you need the Neigong version for the Tai Chi version. I mean, yeah. You don't want it to envelop, the, you know, to influence the mm. Tai Chi version. So that, I think that is a really difficult bit of balance in that. I, I've seen very few Tai Chi people. I, I, I know a lot of very skilled uh, Tai Chi people, um, uh, including, you know, most people know my friend Adam and, and things like this and some other people I know and people I've met in Asia and that who have managed to get the internal forces through Tai Chi without using Neigong or, or a specific Neigong system, but I would say they're quite rare. They're quite rare. Most people, I think, do need Neigong or, or some kind of Neigong or meditation or internal work to get that internal energy. Well, you've got to build a Dantian. You've got to have a container. You've got to... You've got to... <sighs> well, otherwise, Tai Chi gets stuck at rebounding. Well, gym. yeah. That's yeah, what that's you can get, Jim. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah, rebounding, yeah, Jim, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is force in, force out, yeah, yeah. which is a bit basic. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> very frustrating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. somebody's got to that point, so there's a glass ceiling there, so then they've got to go back and so... That, so they've also they've got to build that at the same time. I mean, yeah. My advice when I teach people is is separate them physically. Sure. So you know if you're going to do two practices in a day, make one that and make one the other, and 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 put a mental barrier between the two. And the, you know because mind is everything. You can control what's going on inside with your mind, and so consciously go right. I'm doing that now. I'm doing this now. And in yes. time, they will separate, but because they become normalised within you, they will merge gradually, and they, there you've got the whole picture. Yeah, yeah. it's funny that it? compartmentalisation has mm. to come before I'm glad you said that, because I hate that word. I can never get it. <laughs> My oh, you got, I thought you were able to use of it. You hate saying it. I hate yeah. saying it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to yeah, split yeah. everything up before it can come back together. <laughs> so I, I, th I think some people who, well, most people who know me will know that you, you were the first person who showed me Taiji, the first time I ever yeah, did it was yeah. when I was young following you. It was very basic. Wow, well, it was a start, wasn't it? And, it was a start. And That's I didn't know what's going on. It was something to do with holding a ball and turning here and going slow. And, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what, yeah. What, what, I, why did you, what was the first time you did Taiji for? Was uh, there a reason? I, there was one. Because you've been doing karate for was, years. years. Uh, yeah, I had several motivations. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was a, a Japanese teacher of karate yeah. who. Ironically, I never trained with. I trained with many Japanese teachers and, uh, yeah. and found their their input really useful in their ability to just be completely horrible to you whilst uh, <laughs> giving you instruction and keeping you on the edge too. of the seat. Yeah. You know, was was great. I kind of like that. It made yeah. me nervous, and I kind of like that sort of edgy nervousness. And I never trained with this particular character, uh, a fellow called uh, Kanazawa. Yep. Um, but he had practiced Tai Chi uh, alongside his karate from the age, I guess he was at university, so about 17. And he, okay. and he was, a, at the time, he was a ninth dan. He died quite recently as a tenth dan, you know, yeah. so which, 
you know, I mean, we start talking Dan's and up to that, it sounds, but you know, he was a genuine, a genuine tense Dan at karate, yes. you know. Okay. But his, I listened to him talk and I read a lot of his stuff and his was mellow. He didn't have that harshness of the other ones and it was reflected in his movement. So he moved fluidly. Mm. It looked as if he had potential to move into old age in this way. And I admired him immensely from a distance. So I, that was kind of my first thing. I, I, I don't, even, don't expect you even remember this because you were very young. Yeah. But you or I were walking through, I believe it was New Quay Seafront. Okay. And we walked past, a, uh, there was a, to, uh, tobacco no, news agents so and yep. we walked past the news agents and in the window was a tai chi magazine yep. and on the front of it was this sensei kanazawa the karateka was yep. on the front oh, okay. and i knew he yep. had a, a bent towards society do you remember this no no no, uh, no okay no, I must have been so you were, you were you were like this you know yep. and i went in and uh so I bought this magazine and we went and sat down and already you and I were talking about, you know, you were talking about martial arts. I think yeah. maybe it was just before you kind of started because you couldn't stand up properly yet. <laughs> so it was a bit tricky, you know. <laughs> sure. and, and so I read this article and yeah. in it, the interviewer said, so Mr. Kanazawa, as well as being a renowned Tai Chi person, we, we here tell you are also um, a, a world-renowned karate teacher. And he yes. said, yes, this is true. And he said, could you tell our readers what uh, you, the difference between uh, karate and tai chi? And he said, don't tell karateka, but karate is like life and tai chi is like the whole cosmos. And I read those words out to you. It's, it, yeah. You know, although you were young, this stuff was already having an influence on you. You went, yeah. Wow, Dad! <laughs> you still looked up to me. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, that's cool, son, isn't it? You know, we'll have to do some of that, son, won't we? Anyway, okay. Yes, Dad. That was kind of, yeah, a long okay. time ago. So that was my motivation, really. Sure, sure. And then I read, every time I read good martial art books, they'd talk about pushing hands, and it was always with such reverence that I just, yeah, okay. just thought to myself, there's something going on there, I need to learn that. Right, okay. So that's it. Oh, what, that's, what? What uh, it was quite a while after that that you start. I guess a few years later you found Tai Chi. Yeah, yeah. I okay. wanted to make second dan at karate, which I did in 1995. So okay. at, at, at that point, I I found the local, the best one I could find in the area. Right. Okay. Uh, sure. And started to do some Tai Chi with him, and he was a nice man. He was a nice man, and he did taught for a long time in the London School of Tai Chi in the sort of sixties and that when Tai Chi was just sort of coming into cities and that, yes. so he had quite a good uh, knowledge of it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And yeah. then you've been doing it alongside karate ever since then? Yeah, yeah, on a daily basis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I, the day I started training in karate, the day I broke the instructor's nose, <laughs> I, I, the next morning I woke up and I thought, I, I made myself a promise that I would train every day from yeah. now on until I die. And up to this point, I've kept that promise. So every day I've trained. And yeah, I trained karate and tai chi alongside each other. That, that's one thing, uh, amongst many other things, but one thing I definitely got from you was that workhorse attitude that as I've carried through my martial arts training that I do think, I think, I don't think, I don't want to say it's separate, but it, it's lacking in the martial arts scene in, in general, I think actually amongst most people, they don't, and they're not, there's not that sort of normality for the amount of grinding or working or repetition that you have to do. It's almost seen as a little bit of a, a sickness. I mean, but don't you think that's probably true in most activities? You know, I mean, if you sure, went yeah. to an yeah. art class, let's say, yeah. so you joined an art class and there was 20 members, yeah. probably three or four of those members would be, would be working their canvas every day and the others would just do it in the class. So why, maybe why, that's just the way it is. You but know? it seems strange to me that martial arts that's not accepted because that it, that it's supposed to be something that you it's a daily practice that you grind your way yeah. through. I mean, it's not as if it's not but every that single. Maybe that's something that in, has improved again. You know, in over okay. time, because yeah. I think it's more common now that people do than they used to. Okay. Because yeah. I can remember having this conversation sort of in the nineties, and particularly and, and yeah. talking to other Dan Gray's other black belts and talking about their training and standing with a group of half a dozen and 
Yes. And, and talking about daily training and then sort of looking where you train every day, what on your own, where do you train? <laughs> and I said, well, uh, generally in a, under a tree in a field. Sure. Same yeah. tree, same field, every goddamn day. I come remember rain, that field. Come bloody I remember that giant. tree. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big trench there in the end, yeah. wasn't it? Which is to fill yeah, with yeah. water. So I'd have to train in on Wellington. So. And I got, I got two things from those days as a kid training with you in that field. One was the workhorse attitude that I got to yeah, yeah. work really hard. And the second one, I fucking hate mud. <laughs> I'm a bit traumatised with yeah, the bike I've hate always hated mud. But, you know. Mud reminds me of my, my childhood training in a muddy field. And these I, days, I, I I thought you were going to say guy. getting hit on the end of the fingers with a bucket. I didn't use But I hastened to add, I wasn't <laughs> punishing my son by hitting him because we, we'd fight with Bocker, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, a lot of, yeah. I got a lot of injuries then. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> I tell you, but especially as a teenager, your teenage son has no restraint. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Good, great times though, so funny. Yeah, they were good. But these days I cannot train in a muddy field. <laughs> Actually, I have to have a. I, I choose not to, although I miss it, of course. Of course I do. My most pathetic time was actually I was in that spot and it yeah. was hailing. And I had this yes. poor dog with me. He was getting a little, he wasn't old, but he wasn't a puppy, you know. Yes. And the hailing was coming. And I was determined to train this day, as every other day. <laughs> and I was there with the bromley and you know, like this. And I thought, oh, sorry. So I just put the bromley down. I tried to lift my legs. I was so wet. I got me, so I took my trousers off. Yes. As you do, so then I put my Wellingtons back on, so I've got me well, and there's no doubts about. And so I had my underpants on, I took off my top, and I, I trained for an hour in the hail, yes. and it just continued. Like this. It was the maddest session. I screamed all the way through. The poor old dog was behind the thing, thinking, This guy's gone mad, which I probably had, but. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the next morning, because I had a terrible cold, but I, you know, that was in some ways that was my favourite ever training session. Sure. That was just, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing with training sessions as well, is that often they're not enjoyed at the time so much as when you look back at all the usefulness yes. as well as when you look yeah, back at Yeah, of them. course. Best but things in life are always better looking back, aren't they? I think it's a big risk in practice, even with something like Qigong, right? You know, which is what I've been teaching mostly over the years is that uh, the amount of people that make the mistake when they first start, only when the beginners that think they're there to feel good during the class, and actually I'm saying to no, 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 you should feel good the rest of the time. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, the, the hard yeah, work yeah. you do now benefits the rest. Don't yeah, judge I, I can work. honestly say I've yeah. never enjoyed learning Tai Chi. I've <laughs> never enjoyed, I absolutely adore Tai Chi. I, I, yeah. I, if I was, my favorite activity, actually, yeah, I've got old, so it probably is my favorite activity. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I did, I did, but learning it, I find it laborious, and, you know, all those kinds of very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That. I mean, I do, having said that, I can actually enjoy that. Ex I'm not saying I'm not enjoying that experience, but my yeah. direct experience is actually this freaking hurts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. Um, it's a very painful yeah. practice for sure. Yeah. I've never liked pain, have you? I don't mind it actually, but I, <laughs> I always figured that um, the reason that Tai Chi is uncomfortable, even even more so than something like Bagua actually, is because the, the nature and the speed of what you're doing and the mindset with what you're doing, the absorption means that there's no adrenaline. That's that the biggest sense. problem for me, there's no adrenaline, no. and adrenaline is a great, uh, what do you call it, analgesic yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, for totally, lots of discomfort, totally, right? Totally, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we find it so fascinating. When yeah. you drain adrenaline out of everything and, and all you're left with is your your thoughts and your mm. discomfort and your... So, but there's still something... Like, there, there's a middle stage, I think, which is very hard for people because okay. it, it, it's painful. It's just painful. Mm. But I, I find the later stages, the later stages when you build, having spent a lot of time building internal energy, so when you're standing your internal energy starts to override your physicality. In other words, it becomes more tangible to you. And I think then again, you're going, your body's going through the same processes that are making you uncomfortable. But per, my personal feeling is you, I can't feel it anymore. Yes. And I say uh, there is relief at the end of that tunnel, but it does mean building a lot of internal energy in order Could, to get there. Would it be easy for you? I mean, I have my definition, but would it be easy for you to define what you mean by internal energy or not? 
He doesn't have yeah, to be, yeah, be brief. Yeah, no, as a... I, I, I literally mean en the energy of life. Okay. You yeah. know, I... Yeah, as you say, without explaining the process... It's hard, right? ...of internal energy. I mean, I've, I've, I've been known to say that I think people make the mistake when they're building internal energy to think they're building it here yeah. and refining it here. Yeah. It's all kind of thing. But actually, it's more like you're, you're a mug and the, the internal energy is a, a jug and you pour it in and you pour it till it all overflows. So what I mean is yeah, you yeah. sort of you overbuild it, you overbuild it. And what do I mean by it? Essentially, I guess what I really mean, internal energy is life force. Because if you've got no internal energy, you're dead. So, so therefore, internal energy, by my definition, is life force. So that's why I think it's so important for these arts, and I think it would be important for everybody. But then I don't think everybody would have the patience or the time or no. the mindset to, to actually get. I think, I think that's the thing with internal arts that fascinates me. I think it's probably the only way that human beings can actually experience life force. Mm. And that is quite profound. Mm. It? Yeah, that's quite major. Would you say that was true? I think that's definitely true. And obviously why I'm asking is because um, you know that myself and you are both on the pretty much the same, pretty much the same page with regards to energy. And I think the reason is because, well, we both have direct experience of it. And I think that helps. And, and most of the people I've met that have direct experience of it to varying degrees also have the same um, or similar views of its development and, and what it is. But obviously it's a very controversial concept within the internal arts. And, yeah. and it always has been, actually. I remember yes. picking up, was I it think Fighting I think Arts magazine? Been. Is that what it was called? Fighting Arts Fighting magazine. Arts magazine. magazine. Yeah, yeah, it's a good magazine. It was a I, good magazine. Terry Hill was the editor, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, kind of, I kind of call it the, the end of it, I guess, or, or my memory yeah. is of the end of it. But I, I looked, remember looking at back issues that you had piled around a few, a few years ago. Um, and actually it was better than, I actually thought it was better than most of the stuff that's written these days and better than what has become online blogs. It, it, it was pretty good, good yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, it was but just I remember good. them having the same debate then. I yeah. remember looking in like, what is it, 90s, maybe early 90s, they're still having the same discussions in Tai Chi that they're having now. How to develop power through relaxation, what was release and what is sung and what is chi. Uh, is chi a real thing? Like, it, yeah, nothing's yeah. changed. Oh, in his push hands I mean, the, the wrestling. Thing that, the <laughs> it's the kind same of question. stuff, the thing that holds it back tai chi is, or? is the fact that. The debate, you mean? What holds the debate? It, it holds, the back, holds back the acceptance that such a thing even right. exists. Okay, yeah. Okay, so because, I mean, it, it's logical it does exist. I mean, what's the difference between a person that's a, a body that's alive and dead? Well, it's energetic, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, okay, what do you think it is, the spirit of God or something? Which it could be, it could be the same thing, I don't know, yeah. you know. But somebody will come to the forefront who who has leadership qualities, has mm -hmm. skills, and I'm talking martial arts, and this is extremely common, generally very nice people, very charismatic, and they say to their, their, their followers, it's all rubbish. <laughs> because... <laughs> Their life path hasn't taken them in that direction. It's taken them in the direction of a leader. Sure. You know, which is a different thing altogether. Yeah. And, and they're not lying because they believe it to be true because they think they've been through every process possible, but they haven't. They just so absolutely you're, haven't. You're just and, and so <laughs> the, all their followers, they actually, yeah. they tend to be very pragmatic, nice, tough, efficient people. Yeah. But they don't really want to go off some fairy tale line of Nagong and building yeah. internal energy. So when this guy says it's complete and out rubbish, they go, yeah, I like this guy. Mm -hmm. And look at his skills. So they all follow him. And it's good. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of particular characters here, of course. Yeah. You know, I have some of whom I've met and have really impressed me as people. But they sell their, their students down the road because they take them away from classical arts. And the classical arts are the ones that don't have a glass ceiling. The others all do because they are all aimed at combat efficiency as their furthest development, which actually is like, well, it's like it should be 
30, 32, 33, somebody should be through that stage. Do you know what I mean? Sure, it's yeah. like, okay. you know, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, as a martial art teacher, I'm still focused on those things for teaching other people because they are going through their stage because that's the other danger, isn't it, as yep. a teacher? Yes. It, 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 so that's an interesting take, actually, if I could summarise that, which I, I think is actually very interesting that sometimes the same kind of people that would actually build or, or have the introspection and the time and the patience and the tenacity and the ability to be on their own, let's be honest, and train on their own, to have those yes. qualities are not necessarily the same people that would have the leadership or charisma or kind of extrovert qualities that end up being at the forefront of stuff. Yeah. So by the very nature of it, the loudest voices are often going to be the ones that have difficulty with that kind of training. I think many people that know me, that know me reasonably well, reasonably well would say yeah. I'm an extrovert, but actually I'm a complete and utter introvert. Yes. I, I, I'm happier in my own company. I mean, just literally just me. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. I, but if you're going to, um, you know, I, I think training is also a very important aspect of training. It's a mistake that many people make because training, in my opinion, is wholly about balance. OK, when we take that into Tai Chi, it's about yin and yang. Well, you know, OK, it's refining the process, but it, all training is about balance. Mm -hmm. And most people, they go towards the type, type of training which which they feel they'd be most suited for. Well, by that nature, they're actually feeding their imbalance. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we should always take ourselves out of our comfort zone. And sure. of course, that's initially what, I, on some level it was. Karate, at least I was kind of like, yeah, I was kind of up for the up for the scrap kind of thing. You know, my sure. mindset was quite tough by that time. Um, but to step aside and go into, you know, yourself, when I first started, you started bringing internal methods, but I didn't find them natural in any way, shape or form. No. Yeah, I struggled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I struggled, yeah. you know, like yeah. um, I struggled for motivation and, and that kind of stuff, you know. Maybe that's interesting to, to say, actually, because a, a lot of people listening to this won't, well, won't be familiar with your, yourself other than maybe what they've seen a little bit that I've written on the website or, or something. Yeah, but it, it, it's kind of what happened with us, wasn't it? We almost kind of um, it was almost like a, a tag team effort to learn these internal arts, wasn't it? Because I initially, obviously, you were my first martial arts teacher, um, right from when I was young, and I developed many, many, many qualities that were super helpful to me in my training that I, I never picked up from anyone else. Your your concepts of discipline and the philosophy run through everything, and the decency of a human being and repetition and constantly refining of the self, all of that side of the way I see the arts, that came from you. Ridiculous, man. Yeah, I know. It's true. It's true. I, I, I can, I, I, yeah. I yeah. never encountered, I, yeah. I didn't encounter those qualities later very often, even amongst masters in China and Southeast Asia and places like that. So what happened was we ended up in a situation where I had the ability to travel more than you did. So I'd go away learn a technique, come back, and then essentially we, we yeah, try to develop yeah, it back here in, in Europe, right? So, I, I, yeah. I quite often when I'm teaching uh, courses, I joke, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, like people stand, you're not a great one, you know, because again, I'm, I consider myself a hard teacher in that yeah. I expect people to do their own work. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm not somebody who gets like 50 people in a room, stand here for two hours, I'll be back. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm just not that... I'll show how people are how to do things. I'll give them a reasonable time to do it. And then I'll say, now that's what you need to do at lengthy times. And, yes. and those that are have the seed of potential, that's mm -hmm. another issue, but a seed of potential, they will go away and do it. And that's how I think these arts should be. So you don't I actually agree. physically have to torture people. They can do it themselves. I, I agree <laughs> completely. I, yeah. I think the method of let's all stand together for this amount of try time and, and learn it for it, I think that's flawed because, yeah, the self-filtering of people doesn't take place. No, that's right. Way. That's right. So it's a natural process. Then. Yep. You know, I think yes. all that in the past was often about control. Okay. I can yep. make you do it and yeah, belittle right. you if you can't do it so you'll come yeah, back yeah, for yeah. more, you know, and yep. all that kind of stuff, you know. So, again, you're saying often people who are teaching things... You know, when I'm saying I think I should be a teacher, I'm not that presumption. I just am as I am. I get up in the morning, you know, and get on with what I'm doing. 
Yes. <laughs> Basically, I've, I've always taken that attitude, but definitely some people shouldn't be teachers. <laughs> bullies shouldn't be teachers. No, so bullies should not be teachers. You know what I mean? No, I think that's yeah. true. No, I think, <coughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's on the subject of internal energy, like trying to, trying to define something um, when you have simply, you're not theorising about it, but you're just experiencing it. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it makes it possible when you're teaching people to talk about what you are experiencing in real time, and that's the way in which I try to teach it. Okay. So I'll say to people, so this is what I'm experiencing at this moment. Yeah, okay. And this is how I'm experiencing This is why I'm experiencing This is the process I've done to experience it and how this feels to me. I also state that, in my opinion, that it feels slightly different to everybody, you know, mm. like, because we are so, you know, I said, you know, our, our physical uh, feedback is different for each person. Yeah. But, but then to actually define that to somebody who doesn't train is virtually impossible. Yes, there's no shared language, right? There's, there's no common, no shared language, no common right? ground, let alone shared no. experience, right? I feel as I, I mean, I feel the, the words, I feel as if I have lots of energy. I mean, uh, surely that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you know, kind, kind of, but I'm going to disagree with you there because obviously, as you know, then there's things that can be done beyond that using this concept of internal training or chi that kind of go beyond this idea of just having lots of vitality or energy, right? Yeah. So it's true to a point. Yeah. It's true to a point, right? But you've still got to get people to that point, haven't you? Yes. You know what I mean? But still, I, I do, yeah. Because, you know, the, the best teacher was the saying, the best teacher is show you where to look, not what to find. Not what you're going to find. I kind of agree with that, but at the same time, you've got to have these discussions with students, haven't you? Yeah, and, and other people's you know. experience is really useful. It's just when that experience becomes gospel that it becomes a yeah, yeah, a, a yeah, problem, yeah. right? I, just, I I taught somebody recently, um, some one of your students, somebody that's trained with you, and sort yeah. of in the academy, and okay. I, I, she might see this, and I'm not in any way being a I'm kind of, but she said I was talking about the small water wheel. Yes. And she said, and she said something like, "That's isn't that reserved for demo? Reserved for demo? Yeah, like only really? maybe only you were achieving it in the school. Really? You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because okay, I think yeah. that's lot. Not to. I think there's lots of schools that are like that. Uh, yeah, but well that's that's unhealthy. No, if, yeah, that's unhealthy. No, if ever that nothing is unattainable by any by well, everything should be attainable by everybody right yeah yeah i think so my experience is they are as well yeah if people stick with it yeah you know like like chai chi skills yes you know the times that I, you know people that have just stuck with it you just look around one day and they're pushing hands and suddenly go boom you go yeah nice one man you know what i mean you mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, these skills are attainable by everybody, but it just takes resilience. Well, part, that's partially where fudging is an interesting thing, uh, yeah. what you're talking about there, because yeah. out of all of the things who are a little out of the ordinary, that is the one that is, I think, probably e easiestly attainable by most people if they have the right causations in their body, right? And tangible. And tangible, which is a, a massive thing as well, isn't it? Tangibility because it's relatable to another person. Tangibility is an interesting concept. Isn't it? it is because can tangibility and subjectivity go hand in hand, yeah. which becomes tricky. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Fudgeon's like not free of that. No, Fudgeon's not free of that. No, it definitely isn't free of that. It definitely isn't free of that. Because you've got the factor of the other person involved as well, right? But it is discernible from the person who is is, is Fudgeoning for want of a better term. <laughs> it is discernible, yeah, you right. know. You know, then sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I've taught, and, and, yeah. and you, with suddenly you think, and you're too compliant as a in, yeah, in nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, you know, it's just deep within their nature. For some reason, they're overly compliant. Yes. You know, um, and definitely you come across people who are, you know, overly disruptive, and that's kind of like a bit controversial in it because obviously, yeah. if you're doing something martial art, the person is trying to disrupt. You yeah, know, but there's a difference yeah. between training for something and absolutely, you know, sometimes people will be overly competitive with you when all you're doing is trying to work a principle and explain it and everything. Yeah. So, 
to get you know, it's also true in, in, in martial arts of course you know like very often in martial arts if you're going to do a throw you grab hold of something they throw themselves over your shoulder you're like cranky where are you going man you know That's what I mean many it's times like, I've done things that I grabbed someone <laughs> and they've done the technique and like I didn't do it yet oh, like, yeah. oh I did that once for a demonstration <laughs> you know and I was supposed to smash years ago silly I, I don't martial art demonstration you know but I had to I had to theoretically sort of grab his head and ram my feet in the center of his face and and uh, you know he was obviously he was going to pull back a bit I didn't know how to do it and he doubled over and I smashed my knee straight busting his nose like a I thought he learned the. I learned definitely learned the lesson. I'm sure. It was funny though. I was remember he looked up and there was just blood. He just looked. He went, "Sorry, Paul." I added to the kill section. I was like, "Oh, yeah." yeah. yeah. That, that's the thing, isn't it? With, with something like pushing hands, or or when you're demonstrating a drill, it's quite funny. You do. I could get three categories of people. You get the ones that touch you that are super overly compliant and you can't really teach them anything because if there's no resistance within them, they can't feel the technique so they can't learn it. They're just yeah, doing it themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you get the ones in the middle that are, okay, they can learn because now they're resistant but not too resistant. Like they're sort of trying to feel it. And, and then the third catch would be like, say, just you trying to show them something and then they want to fight you. Yeah, yeah. And I used to make this terrible mistake was just when I would do it, I'd be like, oh, someone's in their mindset, all right, whatever. I just leave it and I go somewhere else. But then what I discovered actually was, especially because the more I became in the public eye, what what was happening was they were challenging and I'm like, all right, person doesn't want to feel it or whatever, mind curve, walk away. But then afterwards, those people would then start to cause trouble everywhere. Da, 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 da. So these days when I get those person, I just demolish them. That's it. That's yeah, what I have yeah. to do. So I, but it's very ugly and it makes it very unpleasant to teach because <sighs> you, yeah, you yeah. immediately have to turn it from a compliant drill into, okay, yeah. now we are competing. And uh, I've never had a policy on what to do. I do remember one, one guy being like this and just really like to grab it. Yeah. Oh, it actually took a swing at me as well. You know, and, and you know that's my territory to be yeah. quite honest. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and it was it was quite funny because actually your mum was standing there at the time, you know. Yes. And as he took it swimming, I just pushed her and I slapped him around the back of the head and just said "prick," and it, <laughs> and walked off. You know, and yeah. your mum. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he deserved it. You know, and he did come back. Thankfully, you know, he went away. And just, yeah, you yeah, people. You know, <laughs> I think you know, where people are concerned, I, I I just think being human is really difficult. Me, I, I've always found being human really difficult. You know, yes. and I can't remember being anything else. So I've always found life really difficult. So. Uh, I have total empathy for the way any person is really. Don't like greed, don't like bitterness and anger and bullying, but beyond that, don't really care, you know, so yeah. I don't mind. Sure. People, you know, I've always had the same attitude. If people come along and I'm, I'm teaching martial arts and they want to um, have a go at me, that's all right. They can come and have a go at me and I'll use my martial arts. If I'm teaching Tai Chi and somebody wants to test me at the sort of Fa Jin or the pushing hand skills, I'm happy to do that. If they want to attack me, I'll knock them out. Yeah. <laughs> I've always had that attitude because, yeah, you know, right. it's a different platform. It's completely different. And it's know? a relevant level of response as well. To yeah, the issue yeah, 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 absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. But mostly I find people are just fine. Yeah. You know, people are so. just people, aren't they? Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I have to say my experience of the last nine, uh, 19 years of teaching, it yes. is now, I think, just coming up to 20, um, it's been really positive. Yeah, overall. so is mine. So, so is mine. my experience of teaching, all the people I've met have been great. It's been difficult I feel better ones. about people now than when ones. I started. <laughs> you know, that was like 30 yeah, odd years, yeah. but I feel better about people now than yeah. when I started. It, it, the trickiness is the bigger a, a school gets, the more varieties of people you have in it. Mm. So the challenge goes up and obviously, um, I know yourself, you have as well, but I've had negative experiences with, with small number, very small number of students and there's always going to be internal politics and drama yeah, that happen yeah, yeah, yeah. within organisations and you know, I think that's a part of it too. Yeah, you and I have always done the same thing. Mm -hmm. now, you might, I do something like this and you do something like this, but yeah. it's not like... I do something like this, 
and I'm not successful because I want to. I want to do something. I like to keep things kind of, you know, not tidy. You know, I was like, like, you know, like my, my, you know, I put class, you know, twenty odd people come and took courses. Yeah. You know, I've always yeah. got. But it's not like this. I don't know as I'd handle that very well. I, I don't think I would. No, know. I can't say I enjoy it. No, it's actually. hard, isn't it? No, no but I have done. I have taught people courses sometimes. You know, yeah. 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 Yeah, because my workshops normally have about 100 to 120 people yeah, on them. And yeah. It is challenging. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. It's very hard. But the funny thing is, like, from my view, <laughs> this this is the, the problem I get, is people get me wrong sometimes because they think that's what I want, these large workshops and these large groups. But I only have the same as other people. I have a website. I have a social media page, which is what every martial arts teacher has pretty much. And okay, yeah, right, I wrote uh, I wrote some books a while back. But I've never paid for advertising. I've never made any effort. Do you know this? But the school just expands. It's providence. So I don't even actually yeah. know what the word means, but it will have to do, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, when you, the first, I remember the first time you advertised around Cardiff yeah, for uh, a ago. class. Yeah. And I saw your advertising. It wasn't the most professional I've ever seen. It was probably, you know, it was terrible. It was, it was awful. Yeah, it was awful. And it was, and, and and it was just in shop shop windows, windows, as you did. Yeah. Yeah. Now. See, so if I did that in a town, and if most people did that in a town, they'd have five people turn up, and mm. one would probably be a dead dog on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I seem to remember about 30 people turned up on the first yeah. night. There's, there's, yeah. you know, there's, there's always, but there's something about our line, and I don't, you know, I, I started off saying that all men are born equal, and absolutely they are, but, but the energetics of a line, Mm. are not all equal and that isn't actually the attainment of the person you know, for some level I think it's luck sure. <laughs> you, know, I, yeah. I, you know what I mean but there's something else going on there's something else going on and that, that's the thing once you start to touch in, into energetics once you start experience energetics on a on a deep and profound level I don't know if that's the right term but you kind of get what I mean in an yeah. intense way you realise that everything's affected by that. So mm -hmm. nothing is as it seems. You can't touch into life force without it affecting life, right? No, no, you can't. And how, I mean, it's for me, it's a long-term depressive, which, you know, you've known me all my life and I've always had a very black side. I don't sit mm -hmm. comfortably with human behaviour, uh, uh, wastage and uh, uh, sort of discard for the planet and everything. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, but. I've never sat comfortably with that side of human nature. Uh, energetics to me are like, it's to touch into them. I mean, it shows that actually there's something completely different going on to what we imagine. Something completely <laughs> different. Yeah. The illusion that they often talk about of, of life is absolute. Yeah, well, you know, we see within a tiny, tiny spectrum, spectrum of the visible yeah, bandwidth tiny. and there's many, many realms of, the, of, I mean, every tradition talked about the, the sheaths of the body and then the subtle realms that exist before yeah, thousand yeah. has 64 realms of existence but then that's, that, that sounds metaphorical but it's not it's literal no it's, it's literal, literal yeah, you it's know literal, yeah. i mean you've only yeah. got to think that our perception our sight probably we probably our greatest sense isn't it that we yeah. uh, that you well, know certainly what we rely on and, and, and all yeah. it is doing is bouncing light off the surface of something and everything is a metaphor for that <laughs> that we experience. So all we're yeah. seeing is the outer shell of existence. The study internal arts, that's what it is. It's going inside existence as far as I'm concerned. So since since we're you know, organically evolving that way within our discussion, then there's there's something I wanted to not ask you about because I, I know about it, but I wanted to um, explore a little bit. So that's, that's the concept obviously with, sorry, a little bit of a wordy introduction, but we have these stages in a person's training development which i think it's fair to say are fairly traditional that you normally the classical view is martial arts first then they get a little bit internal then of course people often develop into have an interest in medicine whether it's self-medicine for self-preservation of the body or, or some people like to express it so you're sort of talking really in the threefold way it is martial medical spiritual kind of yeah uh, but the, yeah so then certainly the next head would be often an exploration of spirit or or a deeper part of human being uh, and i've certainly seen i don't think everybody automatically goes through that stage it's definitely not i think it had, it's a choice it's a choice, but it's I've a seen choice. You go That's what it. I'm talking about. When it to be, if you're at the martial stage, yeah, 
if you've never been at the martial stage, this is something that is, is difficult, isn't it? This is difficult. But I think, don't think we should ever be frightened of doing a bit of backpedaling. There's never an up without a down. <laughs> You've yes. got to sometimes put yourself backwards in order to move forwards. Uh, there's definitely a case for someone needs to do something physical and resistance based, and yeah, yeah. something yeah, first. Yeah. Even even meditators would benefit from yeah. that. Yeah, but but even then, yeah, it it takes a particular mindset to not see everything you're doing as limited by what you're doing. That just see so you've got to be aware of the process in some way. Yeah, I mean all the old teachers taught. They talked of the way. They were all Taoist in nature, even if they wouldn't have said they were Taoist. You know, what I mean they they saw the way. They saw uh, the things in front of them as not as suffering that they've got to avoid, but hurdles they've got to overcome. Sure. Yeah, uh, which is basic difference I guess from sort of Buddhist mindset to Taoist mindset as far as I'm concerned do you know what I mean sure. and I definitely I, I that's, which is why I would say the Taoist mindset definitely suits you better if something's in front of you it's in the way you've got to find a way to use that hurdle to develop yourself sure okay you know? yeah. and, and, yes. and if once somebody has that mindset then they can keep advancing Mm -hmm. But okay. if they if they don't have that mindset, I don't see how they can. So that's kind of it's a conscious thing, isn't it? You yeah, know? and it's certainly a journey I've seen you go through over the years. Obviously, I've mm. known you pretty much since the start of your martial arts journey, and I think I've seen that evolution in you. And it's funny that I remember even when younger, you had um, you always had you had leanings towards the hunt, hunt for spirit, even when the martial art was, yes. was probably, it's like it was always yes. there bleeding. But I see yeah, yeah. a kind of this the scales shifting if you know what yeah I mean. yeah yeah it's funny you know like winston winston yeah. my, my mate winston um, a long -term <laughs> who got us involved yeah. with uh, martial arts first he'd done some shirinji kempo in his hometown mm -hmm. in surrey and then sort of come and stay with us and yes. sort of persuaded me that we should i should get involved in martial arts and then Years later, you know, he'd gone back home and he had a broken his back. He was in, you know, he had a liver transplant. Hadn't been very well. He's still alive now. We still talk every yeah. week, and he's still my my dearest friend. Yeah. Um. But sort of like 15, 20 years into my training, I'd be phoning him up on a Friday and before the before Zoom and all that. So I'd phone yeah. him up and I'd be talking about martial arts, and he'd go. Why don't you get into, more into the spiritual side? And I go, yeah, Winston, I'll get there eventually. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so many processes to go there. Sure, Do sure. not mean yeah. So I made myself almost <laughs> obsessed with each process, yep. but not trapped. There's a difference. I knew it was leading sure, somewhere. Sure, you sure. know, so that's yes, kind of yeah. yeah. So you see, Winston has always been on our path, which is really strange, isn't it? You yeah, know, because I mean? I'm named after him as well. You like your, your second name because he called his. First son Paul after me, yep. who is a, is a lovely character. He's a really nice fellow, Paul, yeah. um, which is nice. And yeah, and, and indeed, you know. I so I could call Winston. you Winston as a first <laughs> name. Not then. I probably would have done. You know yeah. what I mean? I would have done years later. Um, so I I called you Winston as a second name. It's a nice name, isn't it? I think it's a nice yeah, name. It's a nice name. Yeah, 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 it causes yeah. me less trouble than my first name of Damien. Remember I mean, you had dreadlocks, smoke yeah. a lot, of, uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, ironically, I think his father was a big fan of Winston Churchill because he went through the war, so that's oh, probably okay. where it came from. Right, you know okay. what I mean? yeah. No, that makes sense. I don't know any other Winstons other yeah. than Ghostbusters. <laughs> so your 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 training and your development's gone that that way. Yeah. And uh, yeah. obviously, energetics and the kind of study of the internal forces has become a, a larger part of your interest. Yeah, and it's yeah. overtaken everything else. Yeah. And as you say, and I think that's really important, and that's something that I try to highlight to people as well, that are, you know, there's various ways for people to see through the illusion or the suffering of the discomfort of the body. One would be through a more insight-based method to understand the root of something, and once you understand it, it holds those power over you, and, and emptiness, and blah, blah, blah. But of course, the internal arts way often is for the internal energy to just get to a stage where it's more dominant yeah. within your awareness keep than the building, physicality, keep right? Building. It's yeah, always yeah, yeah. Why I keep building. Whatever you do, keep building internal energy. Mm -hmm. You know, and the components for that, of course, healthy lifestyle, are not mm -hmm. rigidly healthy. I mean, I think this is this is a constant debate. You know, and I 
you know, I remember seeing your old podcast recently, spoke with some guy drinking whiskey, and I'm sure lots of people went, what's this in terms of, you know, we're we're so we to hold know. ourselves rigidly <laughs> to a line. What we've yeah. become is brittle and dry. You health, know? health and robustness go hand in hand. Absolutely. Me, rather than, Absolutely. If, you're, if you're incredibly healthy and you live on chickpeas, but then the first time someone has a sniff around you, you, you get sick or there's a different yeah, yeah. life, you break down, you're not healthy. No, 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 no. No, these are, these arts aren't dry, but it's ironic because yeah. they're energetics and they're definitely dry. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I think that's actually true. that's why I like energetics. I've never been into organics. It's a bit messy, isn't it? You yeah, know, it's sure. a bit like okay. not liking mud, isn't it? Me yes. and others like mud, do we? No. <laughs> energetics ain't like that, is it? So I got into acupuncture as well. I don't have to touch people. I just yeah, just needles, yeah. I did a couple of years tonight. Yes. I suppose you remember it was all that. Ah, touching people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. takes it's I mean it takes it takes a lot a lot of time to get to the stage where the energetic system, for want of a better word, the internal energy, the life force or whatever, is more um, prominent or dominant within your awareness because of course tangible it's very is the word I generally use, tangible. Yeah, because the physical body is very tangible. tangible isn't it? You know? But then there's another group of people that find the energy system more tangible than the physical body immediately mm -hmm. right from the beginning mm -hmm. and i would say that's people that suffer mm -hmm. a little bit with their mental health yeah 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 it's your difficult right <laughs> <laughs> second your mother was the yeah, other. Sure. yeah yeah absolutely living with me for hell i'm not surprised who suffers with mental health but there you go yeah yeah we, yeah we both know of, of several people and of course at the beginning that is a blessing isn't it you know, for yeah. their, in their mind, you know, in their perception, but oh, actually it comes yeah. back to bite their ass. you know. Yeah, it's almost like if someone is like that, you always have to turn them back into a brick first. Yeah, so yeah. often I'm working yeah, with people and when they turn yeah. up and they're very sensitive, I can feel all this, it, it, they get very disappointed because I'm like, okay, well, let's get rid of that. And then we return them to a brick. Yeah. They can't feel anything. Okay, yeah. there's your body. And then we go back to building and da 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 da. Yeah. So I've got a really nice a student you've never met, lives locally. Yeah. Uh, local woman, but really nice and does really well, does everything I do. She trains with me. Okay. She's learning he and go then at the moment as well. Oh, you know okay. I mean? I've made it. Uh, you know, I had to make, you know, she, yeah. I've explained the concept to her and she's gone, right, that's what I do. Okay. So cool. she's, yeah. she's sort of taken herself back to that and, okay. and whilst cool. doing her yeah. Tai Chi and doing all her Qigong and the Mei Gong and Qi building and everything. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's a bit, and she, but she, she can see Qi. You know, she right, okay. did, but after yeah. about 10 minutes, you go, crikey, where's all that energy coming out of your head, out of your fingers, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought then, you need to do something <laughs> solid, girl, because that's going to take you too far, you're going to go bad, you know what I mean? But, but you know. not denying the reality of it. That's what people misunderstand often when I tell, tell people that when you train, first of all, we have to get rid of that a little bit. It's not because I believe it's a fantasy or not because no, I believe no, 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 no. it's just that if you're too absorbed into that too quickly, then then your physicality is going to suffer. Right? Go back to what I was talking about. You're yeah. feeling your imbalance because it is an imbalance. Yeah, you're yeah, better at yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's an advanced level than you are at here. So you've got to get better at this to balance it out. And then, it's like yeah. why, you know, where I live in Ubud, what you find is... Uh, skinny young flexible women go to yoga to become skinny flexible young it doesn't make any sense yeah, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. mma school is full yeah. of large muscly males and i always think some days they should swap over and it would yeah. be quite good for them a little I, I do think there is a thing in martial arts though when harsh yeah. people go and learn martial arts if they do it long enough it's like as yang turns to yin eventually yeah. they soften out it do, does work I wish I had you your know, faith. I've seen well, lots, of, I, lots of cases that it should happen, but I've seen lots where it doesn't happen. I've seen it. I've, I've seen it happen. Though. I've seen it happen. Yeah. I did, well, yeah. But you know, I've, I've seen if it the happen, teachers, but not in everybody. If the teachers, I was thinking of my yeah. dear friend John Newton. He's, yeah. Okay. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So yeah. you know, and he's a good teacher and he's a good man. And when you meet his students, it's like me. You know, they put your arm around you. They're just sure, like sure. this and be. Yeah, but when they started, they were like this. So yeah, no. There's a lot of work. examples where it doesn't work, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad teaching. Paranoid. Well, yeah, bad teaching. Bad teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Some, but it should work. Some schools that are still very, I'm quite surprised when I travel around that are older teachers, uh, Western, Asian, doesn't matter. You know, they're generally uh, in their sixties or seventies or teaching, or, and still very focused on 
how to kill a man. You know what I mean? It's all like iron wire kind of. Well, yeah, but still, well, as, 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 as I just said, that you know, when I'm teaching, and I am a man, yes. I'm 66 at the moment, so I have an old age pension. Officially, <laughs> you have no bus passes. So. <laughs> I do have bus passes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I can see that you know, I I would I would still teach people. And so many yeah. people, if they didn't know me, might even think that that's where my head was at. Because yes. if you're teaching somebody, you've got to put your head there for them in order to, yeah. you know, because yeah. that's the stage that they're at. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you know, if I'm teaching young girls, and I get a lot of girls and women teaching, I get a lot of autistic people. Yeah. I let, get a lot of, you know, I've got beginners in karate in their 70s and stuff as well. You yes. Know, like, older ones so quite awkward people to teach often but the girls particularly the young girls uh i, I really tried to make it so they could knock somebody out because yeah. you know i mean the, yeah. the, the, the kind of abuse that women get for being good looking these days you'd think it was a bloody sin wouldn't you sure. crying out that you know social media and stuff yeah like and it's dangerous yeah. it's dangerous. Yeah. well yeah but what's happening in social media is actually happening in people's minds what's happening in their mind they ain't far from what their yeah. deeds is it no true now yeah. i saw this woman talk about this morning and she said uh what did she say yeah men men fear women will laugh at them and women fear men and kill them and I think there's a degree of truth in that. Yeah, there's you a know? bit of a discovery yeah, yeah. even, is it? The, no, the risk really in those situations. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so no, I'm very careful. So, you know, you've got to be able to, yeah, you've got to be able to put yourself back into other people's position. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I think most of them are still kind of stuck there. People are frightened of losing their youth. You've only got to see the level of, uh, of abuse in martial arts, teachers of younger students sexually mm -hmm. is kind of very high. Yes. You know, people, older men, but still stuck on their first sexual encounter mentally and that, not grown yeah. up and, and stuff, do you know? And yeah, that's uh, worryingly yeah. common. It is common, it yeah. is common. And yeah, it's yeah. a very basic thing that a human being should overcome if they're able to deal with people or, or they're dealing with people. Well, if they're dealing with people, they should have people's best interests at heart. You would have thought so. That should I'm going be to go to a karate competition, standard. not yeah. as a competitor, because sports karate never interested me, thankfully. And I never yeah. I never took myself to because it would take me, I wouldn't have gone down this road because that's one's that way and this one's this way, you know? Yes. But I went to one in Bath and there was a sort of really good uh, competition there every year and I went to watch and I sat down and I sat down next to this character that I've been aware of uh, in the martial arts for uh, all about since I started and I was yeah. so I've been trained about 30 odd years then and I was like oh sat next I won't mention that but I sat next to yeah. That's nice. I'll, I'll, I'll have a chat with him in a minute. And then this young girl come over and I said, oh, that's nice. He's got his granddaughter with him. She's a black old oh, dear. They're snogging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Yes. I suspect she was his granddaughter. I mean, that would have been even weirder, I guess. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, Mum, have some pride for crying out loud. I, I, I've been you around, uh, I've been around meditation and, and spiritual teachers in in Asia, and every time you go to see them, there's a different partner that's uh, you know yeah. dangerously young compared yeah. to them. And some people yeah. would laud that and say that's fine, but okay. I, don't, I I think. For someone who's interested in the spiritual arts, I think that's unusual, personally. Yeah. And not to judge someone else's life choices, but I would have thought that... I would say how young would determine the, the yeah. sum of it. You know, yeah. How young? <laughs> she was definitely very young. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's concerning. And that's where we have to cut the podcast. Now, you probably figure out, um, if you've got this far, that there was no clear conclusion, no goodbye, no finishing, no wrapping up. It feels like we cut off halfway through an episode. And the truth is, is because we did. Um, and I'll explain why. And now, in the past, I wouldn't have explained such things because this explanation is going to sound a little woo-woo, a little esoteric. But after this many years in the arts, and I've been teaching for nearly 20 years, far too long already, um, I don't care anymore. Like, I don't know, I don't care. People will judge you, I don't, I don't mind what they think of me. So my explanation is gonna sound a little esoteric, but whatever, you know, think what you will. Basically, part of the reason that I wanted to talk to my father um, in this podcast is I wanted to discuss a couple of things that he had attained in his training, not in his martial arts training, which is what he's most well known for, especially within my school, most people think of him as a martial artist, as a fighter. 
but um, actually it's to do with his meditation and his alchemy uh, training, what he'd achieved through, through that and his Nagong, I guess. Now there are a couple of, there are things we call gateways, gateways that you pass through within these kind of practices, or this is a kind of term that we use within these circles, that various phenomena arise to show you that you've stepped through a level in your, your training. And these phenomena arose for my father. Um, so I wanted to discuss them. I thought it'd be really interesting to get somebody who'd actually been through these phenomena to talk about them. But here's the problem. This is the fifth time I've tried to talk about this subject in recorded format, but each time it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So much so that I'm loath to even mention these phenomena here because the camera will no doubt cut out. So I'll tell you the five times. Yeah, first time was first two times of me on my own. Like this in front of a camera, I tried to talk about these phenomena. Both times the video and the sounds didn't work. Third time was um, well, actually, me and Adam Meisner um, tried discussing it a, a little bit. Um, the episode a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago now, I can't remember, of me and Adam chatting. The one that caused lots of problems because we were drinking and smoking because it was Christmas and <laughs> lots of people <laughs> found that offensive. But anyway, that episode, we tried to talk about it and the sound cut out and the video went funny at the point where we tried to talk about it. Fourth time was on a course and I had some seniors with me and I was chatting about it with them and we were recording the talk as I normally do when I teach. I normally record the lectures. Um, and the video cut out on that, so that's the fourth time. And then the fifth time is here on this podcast uh, with my father. So while we were chatting, as we start to talk about these phenomena, which as far as I'm aware, have never been discussed on camera in English. If they have been, I don't know, I've never seen them. The internet's a really big place, so maybe it's somewhere out there, but I've never seen them anyway. So I was, me and him were discussing for 45 minutes a breakdown of these phenomena, but of course, at that bit of the footage, the rest of the footage worked perfectly, the sound cuts out and the footage goes strange and there's just a weird humming over the recordings. That's, you know, that's five times we tried to discuss it. So some of you listening to this will just go, well, it's a tech failure. And, uh, well, maybe five times the charm. Um, and some of you will say that I'm making it up or cutting it and whatever, I don't care. I don't give a shit what your opinions are if, if you're not going to believe me, to be honest. I'm just telling you what happened. I'm at that stage. I am beyond caring. Previously, I have done. In the past, I've uh, sort of tempered what I said or toned it down a little bit. Um, but I'm at that stage where I think with regards to my approach to the public, I'm now just going to say whatever I want with regards to these arts and hold nothing back. But then it seems that I can't say whatever I want because certain things are protected. So my belief system is that certain pieces of knowledge are protected esoterically to make sure you don't discuss them in the public arena. And that's what happened here. So, I apologize for the talk cutting short. Unfortunately, along with that talk, my dad actually gave some really good advice for new practitioners, um, which was intertwined with the stuff that clearly we're not supposed to talk about according to the lineage protection. Um, and we lost all that. So what I'm going to do is I will um, do a further talk with him in the future and try to share that information. So we'll get it redone. But I still think an hour and 20 of footage um, is plenty and, and enough for you to get to know who my father is. So I hope you enjoyed it and, and sorry for uh, esoteric <laughs> limitations on the show.